플랜 없이 막 신청하고 이런 거 무슨 일이야? 그럴 바에 미국까지 u c l 이런 거 아니야 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 아, 아무튼 많이 쓴다는 거네. 덴마크는 진짜 한 명도 그냥 누가 봐도 진흥적으로 한게 없어. <웃음> 갑자기 막 떠올라가지고. 교수, 교수님이 말했어. <웃음> 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 아, 네, 아, 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 So we asked, why do people use the forward market? And we said, to reduce their exposure to the exchange rate risk. So we use the word which is called lock, which is an important word, fix or lock. So we fix or lock the exchange rate. So we're sure about the exchange rate in the future. <coughs> So here we have some example of a forward quote. So here is the great British pound and the US dollar. So this is the spot price. And then we can see the forward price is gradually get, the number is getting lower. So what does that mean if the number is getting lower? The pound is getting stronger or weaker? Weaker. So we have to remember what we looked at about the base currency and the co currency. Okay? British pound is the base currency. So if the base currency, if this number is going up, the base currency is getting. If this number is going down, the base currency is getting. So let's try again. This is the base currency. If this number is going up, the base currency is getting. If this number is going down, the base currency is getting. Let's try again. <laughs> if the number is going up, the base currency is getting. If the number is going down, the base currency is getting. Okay, can you remember that? Okay, that's the quick way to know whether they're getting weaker or stronger. The base currency, if the number is going up. Base currency is getting stronger. Number going down. The base currency is getting weaker. So the British pound is getting weaker. Can anybody remember what we call that for the forward contract? If the base currency is getting weaker, is it discount or premium? Discount. Discount, right? Weaker discount. So we use a pip because the difference is small. So we we use a pips. So this money pips is the difference. <coughs> so here we can see the forward discount and premium. So here we have the pound and dollar. So here it is on the graph. So pound is the base currency. And we're getting less dollars for our pounds. So in future, the US dollar is getting weaker. Okay, so if we change it around, put the US dollar as the base currency. Now the Great British Pound is the core currency. Then we can see that the US dollar is going to be getting stronger. 
and the pound will be getting weaker. So the same thing, just, just we just changed around the base and the core currency. Here is the US dollar and the Japanese yen. So what's happening here to the yen? Is the line going up or down? Or sorry, what's happening here to the US dollar, to the base currency? Getting weaker, the line is going down, right? What's happening here to the Japanese yen, the base currency? Okay, and then what vocabulary do we use? Because this is a forward contract. Discount and premium. So then you, without looking at your, the answers, you have to decide what's happening here. How much? So we have the US dollar and the Swiss franc. We have the Australian dollar on the left and the US dollar on the right. So first of all, the foreign currency. Is it a discount or premium? How much is the tips? And the US dollar. Is it a discount or premium? How much is the tips? Okay, so you have to do it yourself. First decide which one is trading at a discount, which one at a premium. You should be able to do that quickly. And then for each one, and then is the number getting lower or higher? So let's start here. The US dollar, is it a discount or a premium? Discount. Discount, right. What about the Swiss franc? Premium. Right down here. What about the Australian dollar? And the US dollar? Premium. more tips between the Australian dollar and the US dollar than the Swiss franc. So a forward exchange contract are over-the-counter instruments written by the market maker banks. So the bank quote bid and ask price, the same as the spot rate, we have a bid and ask price for the forward. Okay, the bid prices is, remember they will buy the base currency, the ask prices they will sell the base currency. So the bank has to make a profit too on the forward contract. Bid and ask price is not the same. So we can see this kind of information in the newspaper. But we can also get our tailored. Do you understand tailored? Do you have any tailored clothes? Hmm? Not yet. Tailored is specifically for your size. Okay? So usually the forward contract is, we can see some published price for one, three, and six months. But if we want to make a forward contract for four months, we can call the bank. Okay? 
So we can request that the bank makes gives us a price uh, for four months. Okay, some we can go as far as five years or ten years with the forward contract. So a an uh, outward forward exchange contract is a transaction to buy or sell a currency against another for a fixed forward value date. This is called the settlement date. So settlement means finishing or settling up means uh, finishing the contract. So we fix the, the date of the forward trade date. So let's just say a random date, date right? 10th of October. So we have an obligation. Do you understand obligation? Obligation is a legal term. Uh, so a contractual obligation on both parties, the bank and the client. So basically I can't change my mind and say, oh, I, did it. I don't want to keep do the contract now, right? The currency changed in a favorable way for me, so I changed my mind. Then we're going to go to court. The same for the bank. So here we can see bid and ask price for a six month forward for the British pound and the US dollar. So bid 15812, ask 15816. So what's the spread here? Four pips. Okay. So the market maker will buy the, the British pound at, at this price spot. Okay. And they, this one we're interested in. They will buy the British pound in six months at this and sell the British pound in six months at this rate. So let's do some problem. So assume the US firm has a British pound liability due in six months. What does liability mean? Debt. Debt. So do they have, what do you think? They need to pay British pounds or they're getting British pounds? They need to pay British pounds, okay? So are they going to need to buy British pounds or sell British pounds? Buy British pounds, okay? So they need to pay, they bought something from Britain, they have a liability, they have to pay the British company in British pounds. Okay, when? Now? No, in six months. Okay? How can that happen? Because it's trade, right? The British company could give me six months credit. They send me the bicycles and they, they trust me to pay them back in six months. So I sell some bicycles, I get the money, I can pay back the British company. So what is the problem? The firm has an open short position in Great British Pounds. So what's the problem for the company? Yes, what could change? British Pound gets stronger, right? So let's say I buy bicycles. One bicycle is $100. Okay, let's just make it very simple. I bought one bicycle. It was a hundred dollars. I sell for a hundred dollars in the U.S. Okay, so I bought this for a hundred pounds. <coughs> Let's just make an easy example from the British company, right? And the exchange rate. I want to make a small profit, so let's say exchange. I sell for hundred and twenty dollars. The exchange rate is one to one. One dollar is one pound. Okay, so I buy for a hundred pounds. Okay, and I sell for $120. So I should make a profit of $20 here. But the problem is, this is now, right? Then after six months, what could happen? The pound could get stronger. So what would it look like? What would this exchange rate look like if the pound gets stronger? One pound is going to be one point, one point two or one point three, let's say, right? So now I need to pay back a hundred pounds. How many dollars do I need to pay back a hundred pounds? Now I need a hundred and thirty dollars to pay back. Then I get a hundred pounds and I can pay back the company, right? After six months. But what's my, what is the problem? 
I saw I bought the bike here, hundred pounds, and I said I'd sell it at hundred and twenty dollars, I'll make a profit. Okay? So I sold the bike for hundred and twenty dollars. And now I'm paying back the money, I need hundred and thirty dollars. Where am I going to get the extra ten dollars from? <laughs> hmm? Did I make a profit? No. No, oh, I made a loss. Why? Because the exchange rate changed. Okay? This is now, this is six months later. Okay, so what do I want to do here? Fix the current rate. I want to fix the exchange rate. Then am I sure I'm going to make a profit? If I fix the exchange rate? Yes. yes. If I can fix the exchange rate here after six months, I'm sure I can make a profit. Okay? So after six months, even though the exchange rate changed, I have fixed. It's fixed by contract. Okay, so I just paid hundred dollars, hundred dollars, and I get hundred pounds, and I might keep my profit of twenty dollars. So this is the risk for the company. The firm has an open short position in Great British pounds. The problem is, if the pound strengthens in six months, it will cost more in US dollars to pay the liability. So solution, the US company can lock, okay, lock is or fix the US dollar cost of the pound viability by buying Great British pounds six months forward at the forward rate quoted. In doing so, the US firm has covered, we, call, we use this vocabulary lock, <coughs> uncovered, Covered, okay. If you go out in the sun, do you prefer to be covered or uncovered? Cover. Covered by the umbrella, right? Um. If it's raining, do you prefer to be uncovered or covered? Covered. 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 Then they use that kind of vocabulary for risk too. Okay. If you're covered, you're protected against the risk. Another word is hedged. We use here hedged. <coughs> So here's a question. What is the known US dollar liability in six months if the US firm uses a forward contract to hedge its foreign exchange exposure? <coughs> so the US company has to pay one million British pounds in six months. Okay? And this is the quotes. Okay? So uh, what can we say for sure we will need, how many US dollars will we need to pay the British liability? Here, if we lock it one to one, we say we need 100 British do US dollars to pay one to pounds. Okay? So in this case, so make the calculation. How many US dollars will you need after six months to pay one million British pounds? point here is which of these numbers are we going to be using to convert? Which of these numbers are we going to be using to convert the dollars to pounds to pounds to dollars?
Okay? So which of these, can anybody tell me which of these numbers is, are we going to use? The very last one, 1.5610. Yes, why? First of all, it's six months, right? We're doing six months, not three months or one month, right? Our spot after six months. And then why is it on this side and not this side? We're using dollars to buy pounds, right? So. Why is this the price and not this one? The bank, the bank is selling that much. Okay. So also we can use a simpler way. Just the bank is taking dollars from us and giving us pounds, right? So is the bank going to get, take a higher number of dollars or a lower number of dollars? The bank is taking dollars. Is it going to take the higher number or lower number? Higher number. Higher number, of course, right? If the bank is doing the other way around, the bank is selling, giving me the dollars, it's going to give me the lower number. Okay? If it's giving me dollars, less dollars. If it's getting dollars, it wants more dollars. Okay? So you can think about it in that way too. So we can see that this is the correct number, and then we multiply that by one million pounds. So we will need this much dollars in six months to pay back the amount. So then we know, is this number going to change? If the exchange rate changes, is this number going to change? No. What about if this number changes tomorrow? Is this going to change? No, we already made the contract. We wrote down this number on the contract. Okay? So that's a legal document which can't change. So then let's look at the other side. A US firm has a British pound account receivable. So if it has a, an account receivable, what happens here? What is account receivable? What does receivable mean? Yeah. Who studied financial management before? Hands up if you studied financial management. Huh? A lot of people did. Put up your hand if you studied financial management. Why aren't you putting up your hands? <laughs> what is account receivable? We can pay back in a three months, any, any time. There's accounts payable and accounts receivable. One of them is we're selling to other companies, and the other one is the other company sell to us. So which is accounts receivable? So we sell to the company and they owe us money. Yes, accounts receivable, we sell them something, they owe us money. Receive means we have to get the money. Okay? Payable, accounts payable, we have to pay the money. Okay, so this case accounts receivable. We have we are going to receive the money. Why are we going to receive the money? We sell something to the British. What do Americans sell to the British? What kind of things do Americans sell to the British? Hmm? Anybody? Fish? Hmm? Rolls-Royce. Isn't Rolls-Royce made in the UK? Why would the Americans sell Rolls-Royce to the British? Do you mean GM? Hmm? iPhones. So Apple sells some iPhones to store in the UK. They have an accounts receivable. The receivable is one million pounds. So what's the risk? How much does an iPhone cost? $500. So now it's $500 is 500 pounds at this exchange rate. Okay. What's the risk for Apple? The British pound gets stronger. The last time it was the British pound got stronger was the risk. So if the British pound got stronger, we're going to have $1.3 for one pound. We have 500 pounds for each iPhone. How much is Apple going to get for the iPhone? 
$650. Is that a risk or opportunity? Is that a risk or opportunity? So what's the risk? Hmm? British pound gets weaker. So the British pound gets weaker to 0 0.8. Right? Then we are going to have $400 for every icon. But we thought we were going to get $500. It costs us $450 to make one icon and we get $50 profit. Okay? So here we made $50 profit. We thought we were going to get $50 profit. But here, the exchange rate changed. We only got $400. We made a loss. We don't have enough money to pay our workers or our suppliers. So what do we want to do? Fix our locked exchange rate. Okay? <coughs> so that's just on the other way around. So the firm has a long position in Great British Pounds. What does it mean a long position? I hope it gets stronger or I hope it gets weaker? Right? Long position, I hope the price goes up. People who own houses, they have long positions in the real estate market. They hope the housing price goes up. Okay? Uh, this is an uncovered long position. If we don't do the forward contract, it's uncovered. If the Great British Pound weakens, the US firm will get fewer US dollars. Solution, the US company can lock by selling Great British Pounds three months forward at the forward rate quoted. In doing so, they have covered or hedged their receivable in three months. So what do they need to do in three months? They're going to get a million pounds in three months. What are they going to do with the pounds? Put them in a big box and put on the shelf. Put into the bank as pounds. They need to change into US dollars. So they need to sell the pounds. Okay? So they're going to sell the pounds after three months. So then you need to decide again using this information and these quotes, same quotes. Okay, what is the known US dollar equivalent expected in three months? So we're going to sell the British pounds in three months. How much US dollars will we get? Okay. So I'll make the calculation. So we need to make the calculation. Do you have a pen and paper? If you don't do the calculation in class, then it's not going to be easy to do in the test. In test, we use in class. No, you can't use your cell phone in the test. Students call me that. Even if you turn off. So basically we just need to decide which of these is going to be. So which time are we going to use? Spot? One month, three months or six months? Three months. Three months. Three months. Okay, then which one are we going to use? Left side. Well, we used the right side the last time, right? So using common sense, then we're going to use the left side this time. Okay? <laughs> That's a quick way to do it. But another way is to think, what are we doing? We're selling British pounds. Is the bank going to give us more dollars or less dollars? Less dollars. Less dollars, so they're going to give us the lower number, okay? So we use the lower number on three months, and we get this answer. Okay, does anybody have any question about that calculation? So we're going to need, we're going, we know we're going to get, we're sure we're going to get this many dollars. So we're sure we can pay 
our suppliers and pay our salary. If we don't make the forward contract, are we sure that we can pay our suppliers and pay our, the salaries of our workers? No, we're not. What do you think? Do firm, we saw that if the British pound got stronger, we could make more profit, right? What do you think? Do companies like taking the risk or not? No. Why not? Somebody might say, but well, it's all the same. If it gets weaker, we lose money, but if it gets stronger, we can earn money. So let's do nothing. What's the problem with that? Uncertainty, hmm? yes, but we can win in the uncertainty too. So what's the problem with uncertainty? What? So this is the problem. We have to pay our suppliers and our workers. Okay? Companies, they could make a bigger profit, right? That would be nice, we make a bigger profit. But it's a worse situation for companies if they make a loss. Okay? Then they don't have the money to pay their supplier, or they don't have the money to pay their, their salaries, and they could go bankrupt. Okay? So the downside is worse for the company than the upside. So that's the reason why companies don't want to gamble. But some companies do gamble, right? There was a famous uh, company, company in Brazil. They, they started to do this kind of thing, and then they realized that they could make profit. So they started trying to make profit on the Brazilian real and the US dollar. And of course, for one year, they did very well. They made a big profit. So they start gambling more and more even taking loans to gamble on the foreign exchange market. Instead of just selling their products, they were taking a loan to do even more gambling on the foreign exchange market. And then, of course, the exchange rate trend suddenly changed, and the company went, went bankrupt because of their foreign exchange trading, not because of their business. Okay? So companies are not foreign exchange traders. They are companies which make products import and export. Okay? So that's their business. So they want to focus on their business, not on the foreign exchange market. So we leave the foreign exchange market to the experts. Okay, so next question, try another one. A British firm has one million US dollar liability. This time it's the other way around. A British company has a liability in one moment. So what is the known British pound liability in one month?
저게 중요하구나 왼쪽이 Okay, so which which number are we going to use? <laughs> which which of these? Spot one month, three month, or six month? One month. So on the line, the one on the left or the one on the right? So why? Why did you choose the one on the left? Actually, I didn't understand. Why should I use the left one? What do you think? How did you choose just any, mini, mini, what? Like, when I have to pay back, mm -hmm. I thought um, I have to buy. Yes, you have to buy dollars, right? Sell pounds and buy dollars. Yeah. So, if you're buying dollars from the bank, are they going to give you more dollars or less dollars? Less dollar. Okay, so then you can choose this side. It's less number, less dollars, right? So then we uh, divide. This time we have to divide because we're using this number, okay? But we have uh, one million US dollars. How many pounds is that going to be? Okay. So then we find it's this. Uh, number 639836. Okay, and then uh, the la last one. On this case, the British firm has an accounts receivable. It's going to receive in three months. <coughs> that way. Could you explain to me? You have to explain like she did. What are we doing? Are we buying dollars or selling dollars? Here. We are receiving one million dollars in three months. What are we going to do with the dollars? Put them on our head? What are we going to do with the dollars? Say, Mm, son. We're a British company. We get a million dollars. What are we going to do with the dollars? Sell and buy what? Sell the dollars, buy bananas. <laughs> We're a British company. We're going to sell the dollars and buy what? What do we need to pay our suppliers and pay our employees? British Will they accept bananas? <laughs> if I pay my supplier in bananas or my employee in bananas? <laughs> what will they accept for their salary? British hmm? 
<laughs> We're selling dollars, what are we buying? With the dollars. We're buying British pounds, right? So if we're selling dollars to the bank, right? So we have to think about it that way. We're selling dollars to the bank and we're buying pounds, okay? So do we need, need to give more dollars to the bank or less dollars to the bank? Yes. Why did you say less? We're selling, do we're selling US dollars to the bank, right? Is the bank going to give us this price or this price? We have to give the bank lower dollars to get pounds or more dollars to get pounds? More dollars to get pounds, okay? So we have on this side here. So if you haven't figured that out yet, you need to spend more time to think about that, the relationship with the bank, okay? If we're buying or selling from the bank, is it going to be the higher number or the lower number? So which is the number? On the right, you said, right? So <clears throat> then we make the calculation. We divide the one million dollars by the exchange rate to find out how many pounds we get. This many pounds. Okay. If we were to divide the dollars by this exchange rate, it's lower, so we would get more pounds. So that doesn't make sense, right? We're going to get the one with the less pants. Do you have any question about that? So the, we cannot say that a forward contract is completely risk-free. There's some very small risk. Credit risk, counterparty risk. The risk that the currency will not be delivered. So the bank risk. The risk that the bank will default. Okay? For example, this German bank unexpectedly closed in 1974. Okay? And then defaulted on its foreign exchange commitments. So if the bank closes down, then we, we have that kind of risk. Okay? We made the contract with the bank, but the bank closed down. Does that happen very often? No. No, right? We can avoid this risk by using the fear bank. So client risk, if we make a forward contract the, with the bank, we might not deliver the currency to the bank. So the bank would have some risk. Or sometimes we can make a forward contract just with the other person. They can go bankrupt. So bank risk, we deal with just the top and most credit worthy banks. Stay away from banks with overexposures and high risk. Client risk, we can ensure the payment on the foreign, foreign currency account receivables through bankers' acceptances. So we could make this kind of a deal with our client. We could say, well, let's make this exchange rate after six months. So I'm just going to pay you at this exchange rate after six months. So our client could take the exchange rate risk. But the, if the client goes bankrupt, we could be in trouble. So this is just a normal uh, problem for our exporters anyway. So bankers' acceptance is used to finance an international transaction where exporters are unwilling to offer their goods or services on credit to an importer. So we looked at this example here. We said that Apple sold their iPhones to the British company. Who is the exporter? Apple or a British company? Who is the exporter? Apple. Apple is the exporter, they're the importer. So who is going to give credit to who? British. British. Hmm? Who is going to give credit to who? Apple is selling their phones to the British company. So who is going to give credit? And who's British. Going to British. 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 British company is going to give credit to Apple. Yes. So the British company is going to give a loan to Apple. Cool. Giving credit is like giving a loan. So giving credit means you don't need to pay me now, you can pay me after six months. Do you understand credit card? Yeah. How does a credit card work? Do you have to pay now or later? Later. 
Okay, so credit is the same idea in business. So who is giving who credit? Hmm? Who is giving credit to who? Who has to pay the money? British British. Yeah, so who is giving the credit to the British public? So the exporter has to decide, am I going to give them credit or not? So if Apple Trust is the British company, it's a big company, they've been doing business for a long time, probably Apple will give them credit. Okay, so they, they give, sell them the goods and they trust they're going to pay back. But sometimes they don't. So the exporter is not willing. Maybe they don't know, it's their first time. Maybe it's Apple's first time to deal with this company. So they're not going to give them credit. They're not going to give them a loan. But the British company can't pay Apple now. They want to pay after six months. They need to sell the iPhones and get the money. Okay? So we can use a banker's acceptance. So a banker's acceptance is issued by the importer. It's an order for its bank to pay an exporter a certain amount of money at a predetermined date. Once the bank accepts this order, they are liable for payment. So this company goes to their bank, and they ask their bank to give them a call, a banker's acceptance. Their bank is going to pay Apple after six months. So now Apple trusts the bank, not the company. What happens if this company goes bankrupt? Does the bank still have to pay Apple? Yes, that's the key point. Okay, Apple wouldn't do that. The reason Apple is not doing that is if this company doesn't pay Apple, or this company goes bankrupt, then the bank, their bank is going to pay Apple anyway. Okay? It says here, once the bank accepts this order, they are liable for payment to the exporter. Okay? So the bank is writing a letter to Apple to say, I will pay you the money after six months, no matter what happens. If this company pays me or not, if this company goes bankrupt or not, I'm going to pay you. Why? Because the bank has a relationship with this company. So the bank trusts this company, or the bank takes the risk. Of course the bank gets an interest rate for this. It's a little bit like the bank giving a loan to the company. Okay. So the bank gets an interest payment from the company. Okay. So once the banker's acceptance has been signed by the bank on behalf of the importer, the exporter can hold the, this paper, hold this letter, or they can sell this letter on the secondary market at a lower rate. So I have a letter which says the bank is going to pay, pay me after six months, so I can keep this letter, or sometimes companies sell this as commercial paper in the market, and then the other person is going to collect the money. But of course they're going to sell it at the discount of its par, Par means value. So does discount mean over the value or under the value? Under, under, the, value. under the value, right? So they'll sell this paper to somebody else. So bankers' acceptances are a major part of the US money markets, providing liquidity to exporters and low risk interest income to secondary market buyers. So we can see that many US companies want to use this way. Okay? They provide the liquidity for the exporters. Because if the, I don't want to give credit to the importer, and the importer doesn't have the money to pay me now, then we couldn't do any business, right? So the banker's acceptance provides liquidity. The bank steps in and provides the money to let us do the business now. Okay. So the bank gets some interest rate in return. So here is a kind of diagram that we can see. Uh, you can look at it more in your own time. Okay. But the key point is that before the exporter ships goods, we, have, we get a letter of credit from the importer's bank sent to the exporter's bank. Okay. So the banks communicate with each other and we can ship the goods. This guy here could buy the... the exporter could sell to this guy here, the paper. So do you have any questions about the banker's acceptance? So let's finish there for today.